All right, you are right in time for our health segment. My name is Vivian Ndegwa, and today we will be addressing infertility. Did you know that according to the World Health Organization, one in every six people of reproductive age have experienced infertility in their lifetime. Yes, the numbers are that high. And for that reason, we are having Dr. Washira Morage in studio with us. He is an obstetrician gynecologist, and he will be helping us unpack infertility and get to understand it way better and also get to understand the treatment options available for anyone who may be battling infertility. Dr. Morage, welcome to the show. Thank you, Vivian. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. It's for a pleasure having, having you. It's yes. a pleasure having you. Thank now, you. if we may begin by first defining what infertility is. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Vivian. Um, infertility is inability to conceive for one year. Mm. So if an individual or a couple stays for a whole year, without conceiving, that is labeled as infertility. That is if they are trying? If they are trying. Okay. So uh, there are conditions that you set. Mm -hmm. One, you have set the duration. It's one year. Mm -hmm. We also have the regularity uh, of, of trying. We normally say about three to four times mm -hmm. per week. Mm -hmm. So if a couple is able to meet those two conditions and they are not able to conceive, then that one is labeled as infertility. Mm -hmm. Then you divide infertility into two. Yeah. There's primary infertility, there's secondary infertility. Mm -hmm. For primary, they have never, never uh, been able to conceive. And this I mean conceiving, either it ends up as a baby, mm -hmm. or it ends up as ectopic pregnancy, mm -hmm. or it ends up as, as, as an abortion. Mm -hmm. As long as they have conceived once, and they have stayed for one year, and they have been trying to conceive for, for that particular one year, trying like three to four times per week, then that is primary infertility okay. if they have never never conceived mm -hmm. if they have ever conceived either it ends up as a pregnancy ectopic or abortion that is secondary infertility mm -hmm. then you can have sterility sterility is complete inability to conceive mm -hmm. so there are no chances yeah so that's the three definitions that we have for issues of infertility all right and how yeah. common maybe is infertility in kenya uh, Kenya we do say as experts mm -hmm. that um, infertility is underreported. That's what you normally say. Mm -hmm. But we now in agreement that about 15 to 30 percent of the whole population uh, is infertile. Mm -hmm. And then you look at now in terms of, you know, there's, there's a male contribution, yeah. there's a female contribution. Mm -hmm. The female contribution is about 40 percent and the male contribution is about 30 percent okay. and then the other 30 percent is combined for both, both so you can see things. it's quite important to look at infertility in terms of a couple yeah not one person mm -hmm. because you know generally what we do we do see is that the infertility is like a female problem yeah yet you see there's 40 percent is 30 percent so for good treatment for good approach to management of infertility we need to look at a couple mm -hmm. yeah. and speaking about that maybe what are, are the most common infertility causes in um let's start with men yes yeah in men what we are seeing is issues of of sperms right that's, mm -hmm. that's what we are seeing either a man is is, is okay they have no issues but they do not have sperms mm. because what i would want the you know us to understand is that there's a difference between being able you know being you know sexually okay mm -hmm. no issues sexual performance fine mm. and fertility because sperms is just a component mm -hmm. of the ejaculate mm -hmm. so a man can be okay sound but they may not have sperms or they, they have literal sperms, mm. few sperms, and their figures, their nomograms that we use. Or they can have abnormal sperms. Or they can have weak sperms. Mm. Or the sperms can be agglutinated, they can be together, all those factors. Mm. Then of course there are other factors in men like developmental factors. Uh, men who had things like mums okay. when they were small. Mm. Those, those mums that, that you get when you're young, when you, you know, we start you know, probably primary school and such and you get mums, they can damage the testicles. Oh, really? Then you can, yes. Then uh -huh. you can have things like um, 
sexually transmitted infections. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, I you know gonococcal infections they can cause that. Then of course now there are other issues like diabetes, mm. hypertension. Right then there are other men who are born. Those ones we call them developmental factors. Mm -hmm. Maybe they were born with with with, with non-functional testes, or they were born with the testes in the abdomen, mm. and they did not decide. We call them undecided testes, and then the surgery or was done late because if the sperms the reason why the testicles hung is because they, they, they it's, it's a way of temperature regulation mm -hmm. so if they stay into the abdomen it's like sort of i may put it they overheated and that destroys the function of the testes mm -hmm. so when they grow up they are not able to Others are born with non-functional testes, and therefore they do not even have testosterone. Those are men who will grow up, they will not have maybe beards, you know, you know they may have other features that do not, they do not look like men. Yeah. Yes, and, mm -hmm. and, and then of course now other issues like hermaphrodite, you know, they have, you know, they have, have uh, the genitalia for men, have genitalia for women. So all those we call them deferimental factors. Mm. Others is because of surgery. Because maybe they had surgery in their testicles, and those ones will bring issues. Maybe they had um, they had some some instrumentation in the in the penis in the in the male organ, mm. and that also destroys uh, the structure of the penis, and therefore they may have things like strictures and such. So all those contribute uh, to infertility in men. What we do call male infertility and they are the ones that now contribute to the 30 percent mm. um, uh, that you're talking about okay uh recently we are seeing dietary factors lifestyle mm. either they're obese either they take things like smoking because smoking is a major factor mm. when it comes to fertility both for men and women okay. uh you know you know other 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 other, other substances like mira and the associated compound substance abuse yeah, all those lifestyle changes you are seeing now they are contributing to the you know to 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 the to the um, to the sperms themselves mm. and we do think they are the ones that are causing those sperm problems that we are seeing as a major cause of male infertility okay yeah. before we get into the common causes of infertility in women maybe how how do we get to diagnose you For know the infertility all this uh, all the the ones that you've um outlined you know can someone self-diagnose in the house or how do you diagnose okay normally we start from the history which is very very important and uh, we, we we ask people you know to be willing to to give their history mm. yeah um and, and and the pertinent issues in history is like you know they have been trying to have to have a baby with some certain lady mm -hmm. so they, maybe they were married at one point and then the lady moved on and they got a baby somewhere else all right mm -hmm. and then the, the the man is left alone so the lady got got married they had a baby mm -hmm. so the man is is left without the baby then they are trying someone else and they are not because things like sperm abnormalities mm -hmm. yeah uh, do not have any symptomatology Okay? okay, developmental factors may show because you may find, uh, you know, a man with, with delayed beard formation. They may not have the, the muscular in structure. Yeah, mm -hmm. they may so give, that's alarming. Yeah, that's that will be a bit. You mm. know, you, they, you, you need to, to find out. You yeah, need well, to find out. You may find maybe a man with some breast. Yeah. Yeah, formation like 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 a lady. Mm. So you need to look at that. Mm. So um, other 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 things that may show from the history and then the the um, the physical examination. Because when you are listening to a story, when you want to make a diagnosis, a good history is very very important. It actually gives you more than ninety percent of the diagnosis. Mm. Then you come to examination. So if a lady, if a man then gives you things of a uh, history of moms. You know they had mums. Mm. They may tell you they had surgery. Mm. Yeah, they had done said the testes. Then they were done surgery. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they may they may tell you that possibly when they did a natural sound, something was found out. They may tell you I had maybe a discharge. Mm -hmm. Yes, then you know there must have been maybe a sexually transmitted infection. Mm. And then they tell you they have tried because most of the time in infertility is I have tried. I have been with a lady. Mm. 
yeah. for one year. I've been married mm. for one year. I had this and this relationship. Then you go into that. Then when you are doing investigations, then depending on what you think would be the cause, one of the major things that we do is seminaries. So we do check the sperm, uh, we do the sperm analysis. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the numbers, you look at uh, how, how swift they are swimming, you look at are they, are they, are they, are they mo uh, most of them are, what, what number yeah. is normal? Because you look at about 4% mm -hmm. of, of what you call the strict criteria. And then you look at the numbers, more than 40 million yeah mm -hmm. for a man to be to be fertile then you're looking at how they swim then you're looking at the very fast ones and the slow ones they mm -hmm. should be able to make about 32 percent of the total the mm -hmm. fast and the slow mm -hmm. so those are the elements that you look at uh, in the in the seminaries then you can do now things like the scans and all and then you're able to establish uh, what would be costing because mm -hmm. generally when you're looking at the management of infertility in a man, the first thing you want to do is to make a diagnosis. Once you make a diagnosis, then you know, um, how does this diagnosis, what is the prognosis? Is this something treatable or not treatable? Mm. Then from there, then you can say, how then do I treat? Because this, this, this uh, bullet number two, is it treatable or not treatable? Has a lot of psychological effect on the men. Mm -hmm. You can imagine a man being told you have no sperms. That's and then they are married. Yeah. yeah they, are no, they normally go very, very depressed. In fact, a, quite, quite a number of them do commit suicide. Mm. Yeah, and they feel really out of place. So psychological counseling and support, what you call psychosocial support, mm -hmm. is also a very, very important uh, aspect uh, of the management of male infertility. Yeah. yeah. Uh, before I, I, I want to at least uh, try and wind up on uh, one gender before we get to the next. Yes. So I'll ask another question still on the men. You know, most of the times uh, we as women are told that when you get to the age of 30, you might not be able to conceive. Yes. You know, because they say we have a timeline, we have that biological clock yeah. clicking. Do men have a biological clo uh, clock? Men do not have a biological clock in terms of making a lady pregnant, mm -hmm. okay? Because the difference between a man and a lady, in the men, the sperms are made, are manufactured continuously, mm -hmm. continuously. So even a man of 70, even 75, even 80, can be able to make a lady the pregnant. The quality is still? Yes, the quality is still okay, because okay. They, are, they, they are made anew. Yeah, you are manufacturing. It's like manufacturing something new mm -hmm. every day, every day. As opposed to men, I mean to the ladies, when they were in their mother's womb, they formed eggs. But that maturation, that manufacturing was stopped, was arrested at mm -hmm. a point. And therefore the eggs now stay in the store waiting for the lady to be 15 years. When they start having their first, or 12 or 11, mm -hmm. when they start having their first menses, then one egg is recruited and then the final maturation is done at that point. Mm -hmm. So if these eggs stay for a long time in the store, in the storage, for example, just to, to, for the sake of argument, mm -hmm. then if they stay for long, then they get old. That's the, now the aspect of saying a lady getting to 35 years, you know, mm -hmm. oh, the eggs are getting old, so the ones we get, you cannot fertilize them easily. Mm -hmm. And then even to affect things like IVF, which probably we'll discuss. Yeah. yeah, so that's the difference, but mm -hmm. for the men, the manufacturing is continuous. They are renewing the sperms. So if they are okay, if they are normal, what are normally affects as the men get older is issues of lifestyle. Okay. Then the diseases like diabetes, hypertension, mm -hmm. you know, all those other diseases come in. That is what now affects, you know, their, their quality of sperms. Okay. Otherwise, they are able to, uh, you know, to, to procreate yeah. even at that age. They don't have a biological clock. They don't clock. have a biological clock for mm -hmm. that aspect. All they right. may have other issues of biological clock in other issues, mm -hmm. like the performance, yeah. the regularity of, you know, of, 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 of intercourse mm. or you know, may, may go down, mm. yeah, uh, because they are bit weak, maybe they are sickly, but the quality of the eggs is, is okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, let's get to the um, women. Yeah. What are the most common causes of infertility in women? Uh, women, um, we look at developmental factors. Mm -hmm. We look at endocrine. Endocrine is about hormones. Mm -hmm. Developmental factors are what, or how is a lady born? and what are the issues, and I'm going to elaborate. Then you can have uterine factors, mm. and then you can have now tubal factors. Mm. 
Developmental factors are things like, were they born with a uterus? Were they born with an ovary? Is the ovary functioning? Are they producing hormones? Do they have U1 uterus or double uterus? Do they have a normal uterus or an abnormal uterus? That, those are the factors. They call them developmental factors. Mm -hmm. There is a condition called Morelian dysgenesis. And Morelian dysgenesis is where you, you may find the outer organ of a lady is not there. Yeah, what you call the vagina, you not be there. Mm -hmm. You may find some ladies do not even have the uterus. They may not even have the ovaries, oh. or they may have very weak ovaries, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And those ladies, they, they may grow, and those are the ladies you find maybe even the breast development is mm -hmm. not there. They may not even have the hair. They may not even, you know, what you call the curling angle. The hips are not developing because they do not have that structural capacity to develop that. Those are the developmental uh, problems that we have in ladies. Mm -hmm. Then we have a dock line. A dock line is about hormones. Yeah, Some ladies have ovarian failure. Like now if they use maybe drugs like cancer, maybe the ovaries are not functioning properly, so they, there is no ovulation. Mm -hmm. Diseases like polycystic ovarian disease, what people call PCOS, yeah? where you have overproduction of a male hormone in a lady. Yeah, those are endocrine factors, and this is, these are the things that people or lose, uh, you know, allude to hormone imbalances. Mm -hmm. Okay, those mm -hmm. are the hormone issues. Then you may have uterine factors, abnormal uterus. You may have things like fibroids, things like polyps, and then finally you can have the tubal factors. The tubal factors are like tubal blockage. The tubes can be blocked. The tubes can also be abnormal. So mm -hmm. basically, those are the commonest. But what you find in our setup here um, is more or less of tubal factors mm -hmm. in, in ladies. Mm -hmm. um, that's the very, very commonest. And indeed, when you're thinking of infertility in a lady, you first direct your energy to issues of tubes, right? Mm -hmm. Then from there, you look at um, the uterine factors and then developmental factors. Those are the commonest. And of course, now uh, you go down to the hormonal. Uh, factors, especially if a lady is having irregular menses mm. on top of the infertility or they do not get uh, menses, then me, you then you may go direct to the hormonal uh, issues. But yeah. basically, uh, those are the common causes. Okay, are there, are there symptoms that one should um, maybe look out for and, you know, point out as alarming? I know you've mentioned the irregular menses. Yeah. Uh, so maybe what other symptoms uh, might be there if, if they're there? Yes, uh, they, they can be many depending on the cause. Mm -hmm. um, uh, what we, we, we normally look at, of course, just like their counterpart, the men, uh, a lady will come complaining. And our observation is that the ladies are the ones who come to see the doctor. And mm -hmm. most of the time, they come alone mm -hmm. and say, Doctor, I've been in this, my marriage is yes, in the rocks because I'm not getting a baby. Mm -hmm. You have been trying. If they come and they have tried for less than a year, then we encourage them, mm -hmm. you know, probably to use some, some reductions if we think that they do not have a particular issue. Mm -hmm. Some ladies may come with obvious history. Oh, I was done surgery to the tubes. Oh, I was married again for three years and I didn't get a baby. Mm -hmm. Oh, those ones we launch investigations immediately. But they may come with some symptomatology, like number one, uh, what I talked about, absence of the feminine features. Mm -hmm. You know, they, are not, they, they have not gotten periods, and they're age 17 years. Mm -hmm. yeah? So they have what you call primary amenorrhea. Yeah? They have never, never gotten periods. Then we know that could be pointing to a developmental abnormality. Yeah. Others, you, you, you just come in and say, oh, I'm now 15 years, 16 years, I don't see my boobs mm. developing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. the others will come and say, I've been having a lot of pain in my pelvis. And sometimes I get some foul smelling discharge. Then, of course, that will point to pelvic uh, inflammatory uh, disease. Mm. Then others may come with acne. Yeah, acne, oh. you know, those pimples. Yeah. Some other ladies may come with beards, you know what you call hirsutism, they have abnormal hair. Mm. And, and, and of course, they can even have what you call central obesity. They can have you know, a large tummy around you. Then that will be pointing to polycystic mm -hmm. ovarian disease, which is a major uh, cause of infertility uh, in our setup. Mm. So it depends on what is causing 
you know uh, these issues mm -hmm. others you tell tell you I, I uh, you know I when I touch my private area I don't think I have my vaginal cavity yeah I don't get periods at all mm. or when the periods come they're so painful, painful but I don't get anything coming out mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. I you know, have tried to engage you know in intimacy mm. but it has not been possible yeah when now you check of course you find developmental abnormalities so okay. depending on the issue at hand then you get corresponding uh, symptomatology all right yeah. uh, i want to go back to um, the irregular um Periods, menses. Menses, yeah. yeah so there's uh, regular and irregular yes. and i feel like irregular is also just as common yes so when does it become alarming yes Thank you so much, Vivian, for asking that because there are so many ladies who come and say my periods are irregular. Mm. When you listen, you actually find they are regular. The definition for regular periods is that periods are going to come every between 21 days to 35. Yeah. The issue about 28 days is an average. Okay. And not many ladies who get at every month it has to come after 28 days. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a range, 21 to 35 days. Mm -hmm. Then the periods will last between three and seven days. Mm -hmm. So you may find this month 21, maybe the other month 29, the other month maybe 31, the other month maybe 21. Those are regular periods. So between 21 and 35, and 35 is regular. Is regular. Uh -huh. And then they stay between three and seven days. Mm -hmm. Anything less than three days, anything more than seven days, anything less than 21 days in terms of duration, and anything more than 35, and then, you know, something repetitive. Because... Mm -hmm. The menstrual cycle, as I keep telling most ladies, is, is that it's really dependent on many factors. Mm -hmm. Change of mood, yeah? If one is stressed over something, for example, mm -hmm. yeah, maybe in school you're having exams, or maybe there's you know, a teeth with someone or something, or something that happens, that may change the regularity of periods. So you might find, you may even miss periods for a month. Other factors like weather, uh, weight gain and weight loss. Mm -hmm. If you are very active, if you are a hiker and you climb mountains and all and you are running, mm -hmm. traveling, mm -hmm. may also change the period. So you may find periods, may miss for one month. So what we normally encourage is check if there is no major signs like pain or pregnancy or something. Don't use any medication. Just give yourself like two to three months. Normally you'll find that the menstrual cycle you go back mm. on its own. Other than pumping yourself with hormones yeah. Yeah, that will give you side effects. And on the other hand, they are going to confuse your menstrual cycle. Mm -hmm. You just give time for the body to adjust. Mm -hmm. And maybe for the offending you know, agent, if it's maybe some stress or or maybe something going on, you know, change of climate, traveling and all, to so just go away and then your periods will automatically change mm -hmm. and, and go back to their normal rhythm. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right. Now you've talked about that and, okay, this was actually not even part of my questions, yes. but I remembered I saw something online whereby there are some ladies who are talking about sometimes they take some pills that will stop their menses yeah. for a while. Yeah. Can that cause, um, like... Um, infertility maybe in the future or what side effects can that uh, bring about that one has two 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 major um, you know uh, two major resultant factors that go with that we call it menstrual regulation because they want to stop the menses maybe they are going for a honeymoon yeah. or maybe they are, they are they are on a foreign trip mm. or they are going to a work related intensive issue and they don't want to have menses at that particular time yeah. so they may use some medications yeah, to yeah, to moderate the system so that there is no menses. So what happens? Then that changes the rhythm of the cycle. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. it changes the rhythm of the cycle. They have to give themselves time for the cycle to go back. It doesn't cause infertility, okay. but it changes the the, the, the the cycle. The other thing that it can also do mm -hmm. is very easy to cause ectopic pregnancy. Mm. Yeah, mm -hmm. because once you stop that kind of, you may get even double ovulation. Okay, mm -hmm. and then you may get some disturbance in the tubo, tubo uh, motion. Yeah, so that can also cause abnormal pregnancy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the, the, is there a the frequency to it that is now too much? Uh, not, not, not a standard one. Okay. But we normally say if, and and they are laden. This probably is good to mention about uh, 
you know, the, this uh, emergency pill, because mm. it's the same thing. If you find that you're using regularly, we you say regularly, every two, three months you have to do that, mm. then you better be on a constant family planning method. If you're traveling many times, and then you find that every time you have to change, then you need to discuss your doctor and see how best mm. you should do that. Because the more you do it, the more you're confusing your psycho more, the more you can easily get pregnant if you're not on a family planning method. Yeah. And once you confuse your psycho, it's then very easy to get something like ectopic pregnancy. All right. Yeah. Yeah, in case you're just joining us, we are speaking about infertility and we've talked about um, many things among them being the most common causes of infertility in both men and women. And now we get into the treatment options. Doc, um, before maybe we get into the um, different treatment options available, maybe are there specific foods and supplements or maybe lifestyle, lifestyle changes that will help improve infertility? Yes, um, we normally insist on a good lifestyle. Mm. And what does that mean? Mind what you eat. Because at the end of the day, your lifestyle is very important. You are because of what you eat. Mm. Okay, so the balanced diet. You know, where you're talking of you know, vegetables and fruits. Just in a, because the nutritionist to be the best person, but in terms of food, you know, vegetables, you know, fruits, make sure that you have some, um, some, a bit, some bit of uh, carbohydrates and some proteins, but majority should be fruits and vegetables. And drinking water. Then of course the issues of exercises, yeah? And exercises, because most people try to think that exercises is going to the gym. It's actually really not, not the gym. Because if you could just walk, like every 30 minutes, you just do a brisk walk, and, and you can be able to improvise. Instead of taking a lift up to where you work, maybe from the parking, you know, you can park your car a little further and then you just walk, or you grab your matatu and just walk, maybe home, just take a walk, go to the supermarket, because supermarket these days are within the estates, you just walk. Mm -hmm. You know, a combination of all those, you'll ensure that you keep your BMI to where it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. um, the other thing, of course, is things like alcohol and smoking, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. Moderation, yeah, especially in alcohol, is very, very key. Smoking has a direct effect on fertility. Yeah. That one is really proven because it's cytotoxic. It kills the cells and damages the cells, mm -hmm. uh, both in men and women. Mm -hmm. So those lifestyle changes are very, very key. When you're talking about supplements, uh, yes, there are supplements, the multivitamin supplements, you know, the, the calcium, uh, you know, the vitamin D and many other uh, mm -hmm. supplements uh, that are in the market these days mm -hmm. also help. But primarily, let's, f let's mind what, what we eat. eat. Let's take care of our weight and let's do some bit of exercises. So let's walk, let's do all sorts of things. You're able to go to the gym, is fine. These days there are even so many exercises that you can grab from the YouTube just do them right, you know, into your house and be able to do something. And it's very important. Even five minutes in terms of exercise is very, very important. What we do not know is that the body works like an engine. Mm -hmm. If you exercise for about five minutes, ten minutes, as you are going and doing other things, your body takes time to cool off. And that time, it's actually breaking down the calories. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because and it's good to understand this because most people will want to go to the gym and do very massive exercises for one hour and get very tired. So most people are very scheduled. It's a ritual every day, a ritual every day. 80%, mm -hmm. you know, it's about what we eat. Okay. The 20% is about the exercises. But there are so many supplements, not really necessary to, to take them. Mm -hmm. But once you do those three things, then you are, you are, you are, you are okay. All yeah. right. Yeah. The treatment options. Is yeah. infertility reversible? And what are the options available? Yes. Uh, infertility, if I may start with men, uh, generally infertility uh, can be reversible depending on the cause. When mm -hmm. you're talking about some hormonal issues, yeah, when you're talking about some tubal blockage, mm -hmm. you can be able uh, to reverse. Mm -hmm. But many infertility causes yeah, are very hard to reverse. For example, if a man does not have sperms mm. for some reason, it's very, very difficult to, you know, to, you know, uh, to, to fix that. If they may have few sperms, sometimes there's some medicines you use based on the hormonal 
uh, contribution. You may use some hormonal treatment, you with some blockage, some blockage in the in the male organs. You may be able to work on them. If it's the issues of diet, exercise, lifestyle changes, you may be able to advise and counsel on those ones, and mm -hmm. then you may be able to reverse. If there are developmental factors, unfortunately, it's not easy to reverse. Yeah, it's not easy to reverse. So those ones, it's 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 not easy, and you must use maybe donor. Mm. Yeah, so if it's a man with no sperms and they, they, they are married, they have a lady, then you have to start considering donor sperms. Yeah. Yeah, if, if maybe the testicles were dry, they are operated or they are not functioning again, if they need a baby, it's donor. And now in our country, yeah, mm -hmm. many men are embracing that kind of treatment. Okay. They used to be very strange to tell a man, maybe you know, your wife can carry someone's sperm and you guys can have a baby. Yeah, you know, you're able to convince them that, mm -hmm. yes, that bonding and the love between you and a baby is, is, is likely to be the key thing, mm. yeah, if then you're not able to, to have a baby of your own. Mm. So you're using those, uh, uh, you know, th those, those, those donor, and they're available, mm. and, and we are doing a lot of that in IVF, yeah, and, and also IUI. IVF is where you get now the sperms and the eggs, uh, you know, then in, you know, simply you mix them somewhere in the lab and then you put the fertilized egg into a lady. You can also use IUI. Mm -hmm. You just agree with your wife, they are primed, and then you get the donor sperms and then they are put in the, in the, in the lady. Yeah, so, so basically that's what you use. So depending on the cause mm -hmm. of the male infertility, then, then uh, you, uh, you give the right treatment. Okay. If there are conditions like diabetes, hypertension, you manage them well. Mm -hmm. The control of those two diseases, you'll be able to sort out the male infertility associated with that. If you have diseases like sexual transmitted infections, mm. again, you are able. So depending on the causes, what now informs is it going to be reversible or irreversible. irreversible. Yeah. yeah. For the females, the treatment? For the female, or? then again, the IVF. Same. Mm -hmm. The same way. Mm -hmm. There's a tube of blockage, you can unblock the tubes. Mm. Right now, the understanding is we're doing very few tubo unblocking because you have seen the outcomes are very, very poor. Mm. So the more you try and, and open the tubes, the more you damage them. You know, the more. So you're going to IVF mm. instead. Mm -hmm. So just do IVF. With the issues of hormones, then you balance the hormones, we stimulate and they are okay. Developmental factors, again, again, very, very hard. Because if a lady has no ovaries, has no uterus, then you may have a possibility to use donor sperms. Again, the issue of surrogate. Mm -hmm. Surrogacy then has come up. Because if a lady has no uterus, yeah. if a lady was removed the uterus for some reason, they're not able to carry a baby. If the uterus is really damaged, yeah, maybe the maybe they procured an abortion, the uterus was very damaged, or the uterus is blocked in a condition called uterine synarchia, so it has collapsed, the cavity has collapsed, and they can't have a baby. Mm -hmm. Then they can use surrogacy. Mm. And now we are fighting Kenyans now and blessing these mm. alternative and different options. So more receptible to them. Yeah, infertility. Yeah. Again, the issues of lifestyle in the ladies, very, very key. Mm -hmm. Making sure that you have the BMI between 18 and 25, your exercises, it improves mm -hmm. the fertility. Yeah. yeah. I want to touch a bit on fibroids and infertility. Yeah. Is, there, um, co is there a correlation between the two? And um, when does it get to a point where, okay, now it's causing infertility? Yes. Yeah. The uterine factors. That's, yeah. that's where the fibroids come in okay. as a cause of infertility, mm -hmm. and especially the fibroids that are within the cavity, mm -hmm. what you call some mucous fibroids. Then again, those ones you can remove. And once you remove, then you are good to go. Mm -hmm. The only thing that you have to do as a doctor is to make sure that you really, really are careful when you're doing that myomectomy, that remove fibroids. In fact, what you normally say is that uh, if a lady can conceive with the fibroids, the better. Mm. Yeah, because sometimes you may go in to remove the fibroids and then damage the cavity or you cause adhesions, you transnarchy, and that poses a bigger problem. Mm -hmm. So if a lady is able to to conceive with the fibroids we say well and good conceive then we can handle the fibroids later mm -hmm. but some fibroids um attack the uterus they inside the cavity and therefore they pose a, you know uh, they become a problem at conceiving so those ones we must remove them mm -hmm. yeah. um 
Are, are fertility checkups or checks um, common in Kenya? Um, we and are is now it something you're advising? Yes, yes, uh, Vivian. You're now seeing people coming in yeah. for fertility checks. Mm. Initially, people just used to wait. You get married or you have a partner when you're trying to conceive, you know, three months, six months, one year, no conception, mm -hmm. then you come into the doctor. But now you're finding young couples before they even get married. Even a lady, when they sense that they will want to have a baby, mm -hmm. then they come early, they say, doctor, I've come for a checkup. Mm -hmm. I'm planning to have a baby. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then you do the necessary checkups. You start from the history, find out if there's anything from the history. Then, of course, if there's nothing, then you advise on the lifestyle, you advise on the exercises, you advise on the diet. Then you can do things like pop smear, you can do an ultrasound. And depending on the history, if you think they probably they had like pelvic infection, then you may do a HSG to determine the patency, mm -hmm. the openness of the mm. tubes. Yeah, then you may do even hormone checks. Then you may do even other diseases if they come from a family with diabetes, hypertension, then you can screen. So, and all of that. And then of course the thyroid gland. Mm. Yeah, the ones that's normally in the anterior part of the neck. So mm -hmm. you do all those tests and then you're able to tell the lady yes, you're able to conceive. Okay. Plus of course now if they have irregular uh, periods, then you look, uh, you know, for things like polycystic ovarian disease. So all those things are done. But it's normally a very holistic approach from the history to the examination. And then those two will inform you where you can direct your energy on. If not, then you can just do a general checkup, just like I have described. Mm -hmm. Are there any maybe latest research on uh, fertility treatments and technologies maybe? Um, of course, now the latest technology, I mean, it's not, of course, the latest has been there is IVF. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing now people saying maybe they want to select the gender, so there are all those things now that are going around about mm. uh, uh, gender uh, selection. And then, of course, now there are, there, there are tests that are done in the fetal maternal setup, where you have now people checking for, you know, other, other, other genetic diseases. Yeah you know, the genetic karyotyping, okay? Those are now the, some of the latest technologies that, that, are, that are coming in. Um, otherwise, um, and then of course now, running away from the old styles, like now operating tubes, you're no longer doing that. Mm. Minimally invasive surgery, the laparoscopy, mm -hmm. is another, you know, technology that has really been embraced, and you can do quite a lot Mm -hmm. With the MIS, the, the laparoscopy, you can remove uterine fibroids. You can through actually laparoscopy. Even, through the laparoscopy. You so it's not invasive, invasive at all. No, you, you don't, you do don't like get cut. Way, no, a cut. No, just use some holes. Okay. And then you put in fibrotic cameras, mm. and then you're able to maneuver. You can even now do tubal checkup using laparoscopy. Yeah. You know, you, you just go in with those five, five optic cameras and you're able to check even the tubes and, and see are uh, there some, some fibroids mm. inside the uterus. And you can actually do hysteroscopically remove those fibroids. Mm. So those are the newest technologies that are going ahead. Of course, it's continuing in hope that even issues of genetic um, treatment, you come on board to be able even to check on the babies that are inside and be able to do something on the babies in Richard, because mm -hmm. we now have the fetal maternal now also gaining ground into this country. Mm. Yeah. All right. As we wind up on the conversation, I will yeah. ask you to give us your last remarks on okay. this topic. Okay. Um, what I would say and encourage the viewers is about infertility. Infertility is treatable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Over more than 90%, you can be able to treat infertility. There are options and all ladies should have a baby. And there are now different ways and different options of having a baby. So if you cannot operate, you cannot do ovulation reduction, we do surrogacy, we can do IVF, and even adoption, because that is something that we always forget. Mm. Yes, we forget about adoption. Mm. I know it's still a niche in this country for people to accept adoption, mm. but adoption is a way of having a baby. Yeah. So. People should not shower away we are with infertility. They should seek treatment. We now have different specialities in this country. People are doing infertility. There are so many IVF centers. Of course, they're expensive, but you can go and negotiate with the practitioners. So one should not shy away because of infertility, mm. because there are solutions mm. and options.
yeah, to assist in the yeah. treatment for infertility. All right. Yeah. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Morage. Always a pleasure having you on the show because we get to learn so much. Okay. Always Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Now, I am sure that um, for you who's been watching us back home and probably you were having a problem or you were battling with infertility, you've heard it from this conversation that do not despair. Hope is not lost. There are many treatment options um, for you to be able to have a kid if that is what you are looking towards. This is where we end our conversation here today. Thank you so much to each and every one of you who has been tuned in. My name is Vivian Dagua. Until next time, do enjoy the rest of your viewing and take care.